searching for true love. The question is, where are we going to find it? It seems these days that people are looking for love in all the wrong places. There are over 3,000 dating services in America today. How you doing? It kind of rocked everybody's world. You were not qualified. You are nuts. This thing's filled with legalism. I care about purity. I care about holiness. Like, what, what are you doing? There was a guy who just wanted to put God first. The author of I Kiss Dating Goodbye, a book that sold millions and millions of copies, recently renounces Christianity. He's a former evangelical pastor, and let's talk about it. Before we start, I just want to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you for supporting me. It means so much. And if you want to help support this channel, help me do this more and higher quality and just help, help this become sustainable, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple and you can give monthly on there. So today we're talking all about Josh Harris, author of I Kiss Dating Goodbye, former evangelical pastor. Um, I'm a Christian. This is Daily Disciple and this is where I help you follow Jesus daily. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity to be able to sell so many millions of books to share, you know, your heart with people, the message that you want to get across. What an amazing blessing that is. And yet, when we hear Josh Harris in this interview, which I'm going to talk about, um, he deeply regrets what he wrote in that book. He's actually pulled it from publishing and now he's going on kind of like an apology tour of apologizing to all these different groups, the LGBT, community or just general people that maybe used his advice and didn't find it that helpful. In fact, they say it ruined their lives. So what is this I Kiss Dating Goodbye thing all about? Well, who is Josh Harris? Uh, let's talk about it. So Josh Harris used to be the pastor of an evangelical mega church. Um, he wrote this book called I Kiss Dating Goodbye and he urged people to move past the idea of secular dating and move into something more commonly known as, as courtship. So this idea that parents would be heavily involved in the relationship you wouldn't have necessarily have alone time with your significant other or the person that you're in a relationship with before marriage um, you know it talked about the benefits of holding off on physical you know things like kissing or holding hands or, and stuff like that so this book as you can see if, if you're familiar with <laughs> secular culture and if you're coming here for maybe you're not a Christian you're hearing all this stuff you're like that is insane that's crazy well it you know it was kind of crazy at the time but a lot of Christians and clung on to it they, they really they got this book they they understood the message it obviously received a lot of ridicule people making fun of it but you know it was kind of a controversial book and it was and it was putting forward some really um, some things that maybe people hadn't even considered before he talked about how dating was a training ground for divorce how you continually going on each of these different dates and just kind of being in these relationships constantly and then breaking them off he said it was tra training ground for divorce which obviously got some people upset. So I want to share my opinion on the book itself. But first, I want to dive into the interview that he had in November, um, where he talks about how he totally has pivoted away from Christianity, done a full um, 180. And not only is he divorcing his wife, but he doesn't claim to be a Christian anymore. But let's hear it from him. As a very young man, you wrote a book that sold a million copies. Mm. Yeah, it was called I Kissed Dating Goodbye, and that got a lot of attention because it was a, a radical idea. We shouldn't just not have sex, we should stop dating because dating is leading to us uh, making these mistakes. So the first time you kissed your wife was? At the altar, yeah. I got married uh, about a year and a half after that book was released, and then dove into being a pastor and pastored a church for uh, for 17 years, I was a pastor there. And then this summer, you went on Instagram and said essentially, I don't believe. Mm. By all the measurements that I have for defining a Christian, mm. I'm not a Christian. What do you mean by that? I was really just trying to be honest about the fact that all the ways that I had defined faith and Christianity, that I was no longer choosing to live according to those, 
most significantly the decision that my wife and I made to end our marriage. So the interesting thing about this book is because I know a lot of people and I was within the homeschool uh, movement in the mid 2000s, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, all that. And you know, this was a little bit past uh, before my time, pardon me, it was a little bit before my time. And so I knew people that were a little bit older, maybe like my sister's age, my oldest sister, 25, 26, who had read this book, who had either, you know, accepted it or rejected it or, you know, really honed in on those principles and just tried to do the whole courtship thing. So for me, you know, hearing about this guy, Josh Harris, and how he wrote this book and how he's turning his back on it. For me, there's no like additional baggage because this was kind of before my time. But it is interesting because you think about some of the things that he proposed. And now obviously, you know, oh, there's a whole bunch of people upset because he's totally going back on what he said. But you talk about accountability or keeping, you know, proper boundaries. I haven't read the book, so that, you know, in your opinion might disqualify me from even talking about the validity of it. But in regard to those things, I think we can all agree in, uh, if you're a Christian, because I realize if you're not a Christian, there's really no, uh, there's no, it doesn't make any sense to have, you know, those physical boundaries before marriage or, you know, weight off, you know, kissing or holding hands or even having accountability. None of that stuff makes sense. But for Christians, if, if our desire is to um, please God and honor the other person, then those things are do that's an important conversation to have right where do we draw the lines in in terms of physical contact in emotional you know intimacy where where what kind of conversations are we going to have what conversations are we not going to have um but a real a big problem i think the biggest problem and i've touched on this actually in another video which i encourage you to watch after this one i'm going to link it up there um all about the problem with the purity movement and it's in the the main problem is that this book and people when they read this book they saw this as their you know get a healthy relationship quick scheme like if they didn't kiss if they didn't hold hands if they stuck to this courtship model that their relationship would go fantastic that they wouldn't have those difficulties or addictions or you know just lack of boundaries and and it would all just go really smoothly there'd be a lack of there wouldn't be conflict and and it was just a misguided approach and perspective on these things right purity doesn't it's not just this pragmatic thing where you look at purity and you're like well if you're if you're pure within your relationships before marriage then it's all going to go great no that's not the, the, no one nowhere in the bible it's like you know do these things so you can get this in terms of purity no why do we want to be pure why do we want to set those boundaries we want to do it to honor god right we want to do it to honor the other person so when we have a lack of perspective on this when we're just trying to get out a you know a good healthy relationship almost this pragmatic approach instead of wanting to honor god in whatever way you know we discern does that best then we're gonna be disappointed and i think a lot of people when they read this book and they applied it to their own lives and they found out it wasn't as easy as maybe Josh Harris said it was, or maybe they got a false expectations of what these principles would do for their relationship. And they were disappointed and they were angry. Some people were angry. A lot of people were angry, understandably. Why understandably? Because I was a leader and a spokesman and I called people to live in very particular ways, to sacrifice in very particular ways. And so for me to change in my thinking uh, feels like a betrayal to them. You know, Mike, as a pastor, I, I excommunicated people. <laughs> if you're not living according to the teaching of the Bible and you're living in unrepentant sin, then you have to be put out of the church. and. I think I came to a point of recognizing, you know what, I'm not living according to this. And I held other people to this standard and, you know, I excommunicated myself essentially. The word legalism can be thrown around quite a bit in conversations regarding this book and I Kiss Dating Goodbye and Josh Harris. 
you know, legalism in a sense is God's law without his mercy. It's only focusing on, you know, all the things we have to do without understanding God's grace and God's mercy. Um, and I think in some ways there has been too high of an expectation, like almost adding to the law of God in some of these courtship books or just really stringent books on relationship. Hey, you have to do this. You have to wear, you know, you have to wear this thing. You have to, you can't, you know, kiss or hold hands before marriage or before engagement. Like we're adding to the law in a sense. So it's almost worth worse than legalism because it's not even only like God's law without his grace but it's like our law without God's grace and and that's why I think there's so much damage sometimes that these books can do and and part of the reason that I if if I start writing a you know a relationship book somebody stop me because I think the problem is is that relationships are so complex and this whole process of exactly how this all happens like how do you meet the person you know do you go on do you, are you alone with them do you have a chaperone how many chaperones do you only do group dates oh what kind of physical boundaries oh can you give them a side hug can you give them a handshake can you hold their hand during prayer can you hold their hand just on a regular base can you kiss them like all this stuff when we start putting up these arbitrary boundary boundaries <laughs> obviously we're gonna get some people angry and i have to believe that there was some aspect of that that kind of drew um josh harris uh, josh harris away from christianity if he denies christianity which he does at this point um i don't believe he was ever in the faith i believe he was somebody that that kind of understood the gospel understood what god was about who god was in a sense i have to believe based on his writings and based on a lot of the stuff he's been talking about is that this kind of legalism or this you have to do this you have to do that you have to do that i don't know if he experienced the grace of god the grace of god to say look you know we all make these mistakes we 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 don't do this perfectly um but god god has forgiven us and given us new life by his grace and so we're not held in this state of trying to do everything perfect even in the midst of relationships um i just think it's so sad you know he talks about the divorce with his wife and leaving christianity and it's all kind of tumbling down and so many people who looked at josh harris and saw his book as something that's really that was really beneficial in their lives just being sad and just being heartbroken because one of their heroes um, left the faith. And, and what do you do with that? And I, I think sometimes we can put these people on pedestals, like we can really hold these people and say, you know what, this is like my favorite person or my favorite speaker. And, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have a favorite speaker, but when we hold these people so high and they fall, um, I think that kind of gives us a reminder of where our ultimate trust, hope, and assurance should be. It's not from Jesus' spokesman. It's not from leaders up in the church. No, it's from Jesus. And so if all our faith was in Josh Harris, in him being a great guy, and him sticking to what he believed, and him not being a hypocrite, now he is, right? Um, in him not being a hypocrite, then we would be severely disappointed and we would rightly leave. But our faith isn't in Josh Harris. Our faith is in Jesus. I don't know if I made this totally clear, but let me just talk a little bit about it. I, I agree with some things in his book. Some of the ideas, you know, in terms of, look, we got to be wise in how far we go when we're in a relationship in terms of physical boundaries, in terms of emotional boundaries, right? So that stuff is good. I haven't read the book, so I'm not able to do a full in-depth analysis. I guess my thing would be is just relationships are so complex. Let's be careful when we start saying you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. And that can be frustrating sometimes. I've made some videos on, on those kind of boundaries before, and maybe some people have been frustrated because I haven't drawn those distinct lines in the sand. Obviously, there's ones that there's lines that God draws in the sand in the Bible when we talk about, you know, fornication, no sex before marriage. That's just like plain and simple, right? There's other things too. But when we talk about those boundaries, why am I not willing to make those hard boundaries? Because Jesus doesn't. God doesn't in the Bible. So when he doesn't, then I think we should be really careful about when we're speaking on those, those topics where they're not clear in the Bible let's just be wise about how we're talking about them and not accidentally putting people underneath more bondage or more law just because that's our opinion. That's my perspective. I know people who think that you 
messed up their life, that they're married to the wrong person because of you. Yeah. You know, I apologize for it. I unpublished the books. I pulled the books off the market. But you can't give people, you know, years of their life. Do you feel guilty? How do you feel when people say you caused me great harm? <sighs> well, it was a it was a long process for me. Um, I started seeing that the book really had misled a lot of people. Okay, so people are coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, I married the wrong person because of this book. My life has been terrible because I follow what was in this book. This is all your fault, Josh Harris. How could you do this to me? And I, I honestly, I don't mean to make fun of those people because I do have empathy for them. Um, for us in learning from this, uh, <laughs> We gotta be careful in what book we decide to rule our entire life. Like to me, that sounds like they were one of his disciples, right? Like you don't just read a book and then all of a sudden it like changes your life for the worse. You need to really internalize a lot of the stuff that's in there and apply it to your life. And really like, can we be a little bit discerning here? Can we like that's the that I guess that's the call is what we got to learn from this is is when somebody like Josh Harris comes along and maybe says some good stuff, but maybe doesn't say some good stuff in his book. And, and, and are we able to even now read, you know, maybe you don't want to because now that you know he's not a Christian and all that. But even if you read I Kiss Dating Goodbye, are you able to read it and be discerning and say, hey, this is this is beneficial. Hey, this is a little bit over the line here and to, you know, maybe creating an arbitrary law here or may, setting a boundary that God didn't set. So can I take some of this and apply some, but also be weary of some of it? That's the way we should be reading books it's out in the open now josh harris is not a christian he denounces christianity and for us that may might have looked at him as somewhat of a christian leader as somebody to look up to um just brings our eyes back on jesus that is the person who we place our faith not on josh harris not on what he's saying on in placing our faith in his book and applying it to our whole life because it's gospel no no it's it is the bible my friends and so um i hope you enjoyed this video i hope this helped you in some way and and um, yeah, pray for Josh Harris that he comes to repentance and faith. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like down below and subscribe because I'm creating new videos like this every single week. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I love you and we'll see you next time. Bye.